All right. Next up, please welcome Pangea Communications, presenting our Vlad Yuhas, Radu Yuhas, and Sebastian Presikon. Take it away. I see some people on their phones. So let me guess. Facebook, Twitter, maybe writing an email. And it's totally fine. I do this all the time, especially at conferences. So I won't ask you to turn them off or stop what you're doing. But what I want you to do instead is think about the 4 billion people that don't have this opportunity. Two-thirds of the world's population can go on Facebook or Twitter or any other app that might improve their lives because they're not connected to the Internet. In 2015, most people living on this planet don't have access to online content. And that happens mostly for two reasons. Poor data infrastructure or high cost of data plans. In the developing world, data coverage is extremely limited and usually is available only in cities and surrounding areas. For example, Africa, a continent of more than 1 billion people, has a 3G coverage of 8%. To make matters worse, data plans are so expensive that only a few can afford them, even in those cities. Now, there are companies trying to solve this problem. And most of them try to increase 3G coverage or data coverage, like these guys. But increasing data coverage takes a long time and a lot of money. And it doesn't solve the affordability part of the problem. We're different. We created a technology that allows mobile apps to work without a data connection. We use the existing 2G infrastructure of local operators to deliver data content to any mobile phone, smart or feature phone, via the voice channel. Our solution can be deployed now and doesn't require any investment in infrastructure. And this is how it works. First, we take data and we transform it into a sound wave. We then modulate that sound wave so it mimics a human voice and deliver it via a short voice call to your mobile phone. There, we demodulate the wave, reconstruct data based on that, and the app that you're using displays the result. So let's see how that looks like. Can we switch to the demo, please? For this demo, we'll be using Google Chrome. And this is the Google Chrome that you have installed on your phones. It's the same Google Chrome. But now we're going to start using it without a data connection. The data connection was turned off in Wi-Fi as well. So we started doing a simple search. And we searched for microfinance. Now, soon you'll see a call coming in. And via that call, we'll transfer all the data that's required to load this page. So here you see the call in the background. And then Google Chrome starts displaying the results of the search. Now, we could go on any of these links. They all work. Or we can go on a totally different website. Doesn't matter which one. I think we went here on the Wikipedia entry, the first entry, to see how it looks. So what's happening here is we send a request for, for this data. The request gets to our cloud where we take the data, we package it, we transform it into the sound wave, we modulate it, and send it back to your phone. Like, and this is the result. This is how it looks like. And now, before we switch back to the slides, there's one more thing I want to do. And that is update my status feed. Let's post a status update. And I'm going to say, on stage at TechCrunch Disrupt. And we're going to post it. And you'll be, all be able to see it if you look for me on Facebook. But we're not going to spend any more time on it. So let's switch back to the slides. So I've only showed you one app, two apps, a bit of the second app. But as I mentioned before, we can make any app work without the need of a data connection. Think social media. Email, Wikipedia, news, 
payments. Every other app working in sub-Saharan Africa at little or no cost at all to the end user. We created this technology to connect people. But we need partners. So if you want to work with us to connect the remaining 4 billion people, please come see us off stage. And thank you for listening. All right. Give it up. Great technology. Can you talk you. just a little bit about the business model? Part of me makes me think of kind of a nonprofit because you're connecting um, areas that are challenged because I'm a little bit yep. concerned about how you were able to make so money. So there are multiple aspects of this problem. Uh, we're definitely not a nonprofit and we plan to make money. The way we make money differs a lot from country to country. Because when I'm saying Africa, there are just a lot of countries that monetize in different ways. And I can think of five, six ways to monetize our technology. But our main goal is to get this technology in the hands of as many people as possible. Now there are four billion who can't access online content. If we have 300 million people using our technology, then we can monetize in rev share, we can do advertising, we can do licensing fees, we can do anything we want. We want to make money, but also we want to have this technology. At first, we want to have this technology pushed out to the market. Do you need it pre-installed on the phones, or do you need the carrier to have anything? So do you need a carry deal and or a pre-installation deal? So that would be an ideal, ideal scenario, to have it pre-installed on phones that are going to developing countries. Uh, if we don't have it pre-installed, then we can install it, and it's easy. Just imagine yourself living in somewhere in an area where you don't have connectivity. But you work in a city where you have a Wi-Fi connection. You download it, install it on your phone, go back, and spread it via Bluetooth. So everybody in, in your area who doesn't have access or doesn't have a data plan can still use it. You don't need any approvals from the carrier? We don't. Okay. Yeah, so um, what's the bandwidth that you're seeing over... So currently, uh, we have around 50 gigabytes per second. Okay. Second, and uh, then, oh, sorry, and but we aim for eight. So we are working on improving uh, the speed, and of course, it depends on the quality of the signal. It could be that, as you know, uh, sometimes uh, the signal is not as good as we expect. Of course. Uh, some packages might be lost. Of course, we implement an algorithm to correct uh, those packages and so on. But just, let me just jump on that uh, a bit. Sure. So we, we realize that some apps need high-speed internet, but most apps just need basic connectivity, like Facebook or Twitter or email or payments. We, we can provide those apps with enough bandwidth to work, maybe a bit slower, but the functionality is the same, and people could be accessing them everywhere in the world. Looking uh, long-term, say, uh, you know, a couple decades into the future, assuming that the developing countries do get the infrastructure yeah. that they're lacking, um, how would the company change, or would you be a media company that has huge market share in developing nations? Okay, so this is a question that we probably get the most. Uh, and we don't want to position ourselves as competitors to any other technology that tries to bring or connect people to the Internet. Our mission is to connect everybody to the Internet as soon as possible, and we're working towards that. We want them to succeed. We want to work with them. We, we want to push in the same direction. But when that happens, we'll obviously have a lot of users that we can monetize or just add, you go into an advertising platform or any other direction that, that, that's available at that point. We'll go, we'll use data as well. We'll move, to, we're a software company, we innovate, we reiterate, iterate, and then. Thanks. As you look at rolling out the technology, are you thinking, I guess, geographically, like you'll focus on one country specifically and try to maybe have that spread virally? What are yeah, your thoughts we're, about launching we're looking, we're looking at Nigeria now, and they're probably going to launch in, in summer, early summer, with a big carrier. I mean, my final concern is the speed of which 3G coverage increases. I mean, a few years ago, people were, you know, we were at like 800 million phones in India and like zero 3G, and I think in like three years, we're like reaching the 200 million cell phone uh, with 3G, and it, it's a five-year horizon where you get like, I don't know, 50, so it, 60 it really percent of the population. Sorry. It really depends on country to country. Because, yes, Asia, in Asia, the penetration is much faster. In Africa, it's much slower. Two years ago, the 3G coverage was almost the same as it is now. Uh, but even in Asia and Latin America, the cost is a big factor. There, it's not so much the coverage, but it's the cost of a data plan. So one thing I would think about, one counterintuitive thing, obviously we've done some work in... Um, in bringing connectivity to the developing world. One thing that's counterintuitive is people don't know why they want the internet. So, um, 
lots of many people in the world live close enough to a cell phone tower yep. that they don't purchase a data plan because they don't yep. see why it would be exactly expensive. that's a main point. Oh, sorry. So anyway, it's just something I would think about yeah. in terms of uh, bringing, you know, getting users on board is uh, why. So that's the main reason why carriers want to work with us. At first, we thought it was, okay, they can sell more voice minutes. But then when we spoke with them, they plan to use us as an upsell for data plans. Because yes, people who don't realize the importance of data uh, can, can, won't buy a data plan that might cost 20% of their salaries. But if they can go on Facebook or if they can go have an email account or go on Twitter or read the news, then they'll realize the importance of data and might make the sacrifice to buy a data plan, especially when, when the price drops. Interesting. Okay. Is there an explicit business model? Meaning you're taking a fee per minute, you're taking a percentage of the, the voice uh, data? Or the so voice we, can, we can do all of those, but it's really dependent on country to country, and I don't want to speculate. But depending on the country, we'll probably do all of them. It's just we, we're not at the point right now where we're thinking of monetization. We're at the point where we're thinking of pushing this, that, this technology to as many people as possible. Because we do have to prioritize. We're a startup with limited resources. Very quickly, how come Google and Facebook didn't do this before launching satellites and, you know? Maybe they'll give you an answer. We don't know. Nobody has tried this before. Okay. Nobody, we know that nobody has tried this before, but we definitely would like to know why they didn't do it. And also, we'd like to work with them if, if they want to work with us in pushing our technology okay. and theirs to the market. Have you talked to any carriers about this? Because I could see them seeing it more as arbitrage of their pricing plans or circumvention yep. than being... We have. We have talked to carriers. We're going to launch with a big carrier in Africa this summer. Okay. And also a carrier through their venture fund invested in our seed run. All right. Unfortunately, we're out of time. That was Pangea Communications. Super Thank cool. Thank you.